Hi guys. This is the second time recording this video today because this morning I filmed it and it was great, all good, but I was wearing this jacket and all you could hear in the mic with every little like bump in the road or any slight movement, you could just hear my jacket crinkling in the mic and it was super annoying. So <clears throat> I didn't want to upload that. If it was just a couple of times, that would have been one thing, but this was like a lot. So scrap that and we're back for round two. So what we're going to talk about today is I want to hit on the Doherty Dozen Kinship Child kind of exposing how they're feeling about being with Alicia. And the second thing I want to touch on is an update on the McLeod fam. And I've co I covered the McLeod fam many months ago. I've done a few videos on Ika and the problematic content that she has made. So I will link those other videos down below if you guys want a little bit more of a history or background as to who she is and why anyone would have a problem with her presence. Um, so I'll link those down below. Most of y'all probably already know about the Doherty Dozen. Now, as we know, she has two kinship placements in her home right now. And the kinship daughter has a Snapchat. And I was sent these snaps from one of my amazing followers on Instagram. If y'all aren't following me over there, feel free. I respond to all messages. I talk to y'all all day long and it's a good time. So if you're interested, go give me a follow. If not, that's fine too. All good. But she sent me these snaps and when I saw them, I immediately thought, okay, so this is how she really feels about living with Alicia. As a reminder for anyone who would like a reminder, kinship is not a permanent placement. So kinship is a temporary placement and it's reviewed by the court at a later date. So Alicia was supposed to go back to court in August. I haven't heard any official updates or anything like that. I'm not sure if it got continued or postponed or what's going on, but she has not been back to court with these kinship placements that she has. But I thought for a long time, you know, her kind of giving them materialistic stuff and being the quote fun house and doing TikToks and trying to be the kind of cool mom was a huge missed opportunity for her to actually guide these kids, give them some structure, give them some, um, you know, guidance on how to be a functioning member of society once they're outside of that home, because the kinship kids are not real little kids. Like, you know, if, if I, if my assumption is correct, they're probably going to get out of high school, graduate, either go to college or start looking for jobs. I hope that they don't become full-time TikTokers because of what Alicia has kind of ingrained as quote, a normal job being a mom fluencer, as she calls herself, because that's just not, um, it, it's not a long-term plan for financial security, being an influencer. And that's how I feel about it. Essentially what happened is the kinship daughter went ahead and shared on Snapchat that she, she put up three and it basically said that when she closes her eyes, she'll fantasize sometimes that she's back home and seeing those really hurt my heart. What it tells me is that not everything of the Doherty household is funny TikToks and unlimited grocery shopping hauls. Because if things were that good, then why would she want to publicly share that she at times fantasizes about being back home? Alicia with 11 other children, there is no way that this girl is getting an adequate amount of one-on-one -on -one attention from Alicia. 
now other things I'm up to debate and talk about it and all of that kind of stuff but when it comes to having that many kids and you're constantly on your phone doing TikToks or applying to comments figuring out what your next brand deal is going to be there's just no way that you can dedicate an adequate amount of time one-on-one -on -one with each of your children and that is my opinion and I don't see it changing anytime soon because it, it, it's it's a math equation like let's be honest you know what I mean so for her to expose that really had me thinking and I went back in my things that I have covered and something that I never shared with you guys even though it is a public Facebook post is that the kinship mother posted on Facebook several months ago announcing kind of the fact that these two kinship kids were going to be with Alicia and I will share it I kind of went back and forth on do I share this do I not but it is a public post after all anyone can find it anyone can come across it that's why there's a screenshot of it because it's public I really hope that their mom can in between now and when you know these kids hopefully before they turn 18 I really hope that she can have them back in her home and kind of reclaim some of this time that she has lost since they've been with Alicia and I hope that they can use that time to bond and rebuild their relationship as child and mother I really do hope that because aside from Alicia giving them a home and food which is the bare bones minimum you can do as a parent she's not giving them anything that is of real value and that's my opinion based on everything that I've seen and I've seen a lot of her content so I wanted to share that only because it's not very often that we see kind of these candid posts from kids that are a part of family vlogging situations and what I think makes this one really interesting is the fact that it's a kinship placement so she has kind of gotten a different view as to being a newer introduction to the Doherty home this isn't a bio kid who grew up with Alicia and that's the only parent that they've ever known so I think that she does have a little bit of a different stance and I was interested to read that and I also want to know how y'all feel about it now secondly moving on to the McLeod fam I this is a big mess so it has three key players Ika who is the mom of the McLeod fam Ava Louise who is a social media influencer and Ethan is Supreme who is deceased and may his soul rest in peace but he is a key player in this situation that is unfolding right now on TikTok so as you guys know Ika uploads a lot of problematic stuff she's still current day uploading things like taking kids to the doctor and vlogging the doctor visit she is constantly sharing um <clears throat> little intimate moments that don't need to be for TikTok. Like just a couple weeks ago, she was sharing how her child while using the bathroom was singing the ABCs and she decided to film that, not film the child, but film the situation from her seat and share it with TikTok. Like these situations are embarrassing. They're um, very cute if they're kept within the household not everything needs to be put on TikTok not everything needs to be something that you upload to make yourself seem more relatable or quirky it's not quirky it's not funny and it's just another example of something that should have been kept private but as her track record shows she's constantly oversharing it is her brand to overshare 
Eco also decided to share that she was giving her son a haircut and in the video she made sure to put a subtitle that the child was wearing a diaper and my thing with that is if you think that your child might be seen in this video for being nude why don't you put a pair of shorts on him and then people won't even have a question She's done a lot of sponsorships before I get into the Ava Louise part of this. She's also been sponsored by some pretty big brands recently, which is kind of disheartening to see these brands just continue to support family vloggers like Ika. Um, some of the brands that she has been sponsored by very recently is uh, Volkswagen. She did two videos with Crest, Aveeno, Mr. Clean, and Garnier. So those brands, if you support them, you might want to take a second look at where your money is going because they are supporting Ika and the McLeod fam over on TikTok. Now, before we get into the Ava Louise part, I want to give you guys a little bit of background so it's easier to understand. A couple of years ago, Ethan made a video making fun of Ika for being a Disney adult. He said some hurtful things in the video that I wouldn't have said myself. But again, he's a 17 year old boy and he was also known for being outrageous in order to get more attention, more clicks, more likes. And I would almost have considered him to be trolling at times, not all the time, but some of the things he said were just outrageous and not very nice. And that's my opinion based on the videos that I saw from him. Now, based on that video, Ika went ahead and responded and she played the video that he made making fun of her. Essentially, it upset her fan base to the point where, um, you know, she, she wanted to yell out like harassment, bullying, cyber stalking. These are all really serious claims to make. Just because someone makes a video and has some hurtful comments, that doesn't equate to harassment. When I think of harassment, I would think of those videos coming like once a week, twice a week, or more often, where they're filled with things like, oh, you're fat, oh, you're ugly, oh, call CPS. Like if that's coming over and over again, then we're getting into the side of like cyber harassing somebody but making one video that was distasteful is not harassment or stalking but either way um it really upset all of Ika's followers so they decided to get revenge and they allegedly started contacting Ethan's sponsors um brands that he had worked with his manager like his social media manager and it sent him into a place of losing brand deals and not having people very happy with him. This in turn put him into a really bad place mentally. Now, sadly, Ethan did pass from an overdose and he passed on September 5th of 2020. Now, moving on to current day, Eva Louise, who is very well known for um, trolling and she's the infamous influencer who licked a toilet seat cover and called it the coronavirus challenge, which was just enough said, disgusting. Um, but she's known for trolling and lying. She lied about uh, Kanye having an affair on Kim with Jeffree Star. She later admitted that that was all fabricated just to get people to talk about her. I'm really not even getting sued. I made this entire scandal up. There is literally not one bit of truth to anything I have said. I just tricked the entire world into talking about me again because I was on a lot of Adderall and bored. And that's on being an icon. We all had fun though, didn't we? You're welcome for the memes. So she is one of the poster children for outrage marketing 100 percent not a, no doubt zero doubt um she loves outrage marketing like she is the poster child a couple days ago she came out with a video and she fully blamed ethan's passing on ika 
This creator is the reason my best friend is dead. I know that's a lot to put on somebody, so I've never spoken about it publicly. The only other person I've discussed this situation with is his mother. But I want to have a greater discussion about cancel culture right now. So I'm finally ready to tell his story. In 2020, a video this woman made of her at Disneyland with her kids popped up on my best friend's For You page. He didn't click on her page. He knew nothing about her. He did not know her story. He simply saw a mother at Disneyland with her kids. A Disney-obsessed mom. He made a TikTok stitching it or something, saying a joke a teenager would find funny. He was like, what if the kids like monster trucks, but you're forcing them to hang out with Mickey Mouse all day? Let them pick their own interests. And mind you, he made it like super clear he was talking about Disney moms in general, like not this woman. He didn't talk about her kids. He didn't know anything about her. The video didn't even get that many views. He was just a 17-year-old kid making a joke that a 17-year-old kid would make on TikTok. This woman caught wind of it and she made her own video saying that he was harassing her and her special needs foster kids. That's a really big and bad and untrue accusation because he was not doing that at all. And her video got millions of views and he started getting a lot of hate, which was really hard on a teenager who already had depression and mental health problems. But if it ended there, it would have been fine. She wanted to destroy him though in any way she could. So she emailed everyone who sponsored him and said, stop giving him brand deals. His brand deals communicated with him that they received this email and that they watched his video and did not find it offensive. So they would continue to work with him. He felt relieved and continued to post his sponsored content. She was not okay with the fact that this 17 year old minor still got brand deals. So she posted on her socials for all of her followers to harass the companies until they dropped him. They got thousands of emails. She has millions of followers. They wanted to make it end, so they cut all ties with him. His manager that he had been working with since he was 12 got the same type of emails and cut all ties. He called me crying every single day, saying he couldn't do life anymore. He was devastated. So I messaged her personally and said, hey, he is a minor, you are a full-grown adult. When a full-grown adult has a problem with a minor, they should complain to the parent. She accused me of harassing her. This situation sent my already depressed friend over the edge and he overdosed and died less than two weeks later. So essentially what she was trying to reconcile was that Ika responding to Ethan and upsetting her fans to the point where they were contacting Ethan's sponsors, so on and so forth, sent him into a place where he overdosed. The reason that I have a hard time with this is number one, you should never blame somebody's death on somebody else unless they were literally murdered in a car accident. Like you can't blame somebody else for an accidental overdose. And the reason that I found this part interesting was because she wanted to say that, oh, this is Ika's fault. However, right after Ethan passed, she put up a tweet saying that it was a complete accident. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional and it was an awful, awful accident. So which one is it? Is it Ika's fault or was it an awful accident? As you said, just two days after Ethan passed. Ava has also made light of things like taking too many Xanax and drinking alcohol. Tell me you've been addicted to Xanax without telling me you've been addicted to Xanax. Hmm, where do I begin? I took six and woke up pissing my bed because I was so relaxed. Just peed. No fucks given. And like I slept in the pee. I took five and chased them down with some new Amsterdam. Woke up in my bed thinking everything was fine. No, it wasn't fine. I find out two weeks later that I went to a fraternity party, pulled the fire alarm, and showed everyone my boobs. Anything that Ava says, I take with a huge grain of salt. Like, the woman could literally 
come out and say that the grass is green and I wouldn't believe her just because I look at her as an untrustworthy source and therefore I think anything that she says needs to be fully investigated and tied out with facts and that has nothing to do with you know Ika responded again to all of these claims and I want to start this video with a trigger warning as it will include sensitive subject matter Today, I woke up to a video made about me attempting to defame my character by utilizing false information. This video was made by someone named Ava Louise, and I want to address it. If you don't know who Ava Louise is, she was first featured on Dr. Phil to talk about how addicted she was to social media and clout. She has a history of repeatedly attempting to defame the character of others to gain attention for clout. In 2020, a video was made about me and my children. A creator I did not know, had never heard of, and whose content I'd never seen posted calling me fat, old, and telling people to call CPS on me because I was taking my children to Disneyland. Contrary to what was stated, we did not have millions of followers at this time. We had approximately 300,000, but the creator who made that video had about a million followers. I posted the original video in which I said nothing. Here is that video. Ava did reach out to me via DM at the time, stating that Ethan wanted to unalive himself. I asked her multiple times to please get him some help, and she repeatedly ignored that. Here is that screenshot. It has been stated that I went on to harass Ethan. This couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I had to retain legal representation in an effort to get both he and Ava to stop harassing and making videos about me, videos that allege extreme allegations that were absolutely false. It has also been alleged that I am somehow responsible for Ethan's passing and that Ava has stated he unalived himself. This is in direct contradiction to the statement she made right after his death, including this tweet. Ava's past behavior truly speaks for itself. I also wanted to state that mental health and addiction are very serious issues. What happened to Ethan was absolutely heartbreaking. I will be including a mental health resource in our bio for anybody who needs it. She mentioned how Ava was on Dr. Phil. Being on Dr. Phil doesn't bother me. I couldn't really care less about her being on Dr. Phil. Now, the reason that she was on Dr. Phil, I do find a little interesting. And that was, um, you know, because she was addicted to social media and loved clout. She has also said that that was fake. So it's like everything, it's like a he said, she said thing. I don't think that Ika is a good person at all, but I also don't think that Ava Louise is a good person. And I definitely don't think that she is a trusted source. Here, here's my conclusion with this situation. It's a she said, she said. Um, both of them could be lying here and there. There could be half truths peppered in to this entire uh, dialogue between both of them. There are many things that I can criticize Ika for, but fully placing someone's overdose death on her is not something that I think is acceptable. You know, internet culture and this cancel culture kind of stuff it can get very toxic. I'm here for accountability all day long. But unfortunately, we live in an internet society where people are going to want answers. You know, there's a fine line between someone making a video poking fun at being a Disney adult. When that turns into an upset fan base where you know, sponsors are being contacted and emails are being sent and all of this kind of stuff. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. The one thing that I can say with confidence is that Ika should not be fully blamed for what was clearly an awful accident. What I have seen personally is sometimes 
being in the trenches of social media when you have someone who is trying to live in recovery it's not always the best recipe for success and i'm not a professional that's just my kind of stance as to what i have seen over a long period of time to close it out don't think that Ika should be fully blamed is there a lot that i can criticize her for absolutely will i always criticize her for what i think is oversharing her child's journey yes just as i've criticized anna and jonathan for doing the same thing with their child e not everything is for social media not everything is for your clicks your views your likes and that's the way that i feel about it i will continue to give her criticism off and on um but i don't think that she should take the fall or take the responsibility for someone literally dying that is disgusting and ava louise is a terrible source as i said i wouldn't believe anything that the girl says because she's a known liar and she's a known troll and that's how i feel so either way those are going to be my thoughts for now if you like the video please leave a like and a comment and if you'd like to see more from me in the future please subscribe i'll see you guys soon bye